Okay, great. So yeah, just let's start by same telling us what what he understood and um, yeah, what his expectations and everything else. Okay, go on, say. Okay, from what I understood, the challenge this week is analyzing the relationship between some of the demographics and learning data and how these these factors have affected digital based learning as well as it's also related to covid affecting learning and these demographics in tandem with covid affecting learning we are provided with data about school districts in different uh, states and as well as the products they use and the engagement around these products and we're supposed to use all of this information to give analysis and say something about the effect they've had on the education so and how the demographics have affected at least that's what i understood yeah great so what do you think you would use or like you know where do you think you would compared to people with experience and competing and being in the leader working toggle, where do you think you have a, like you would be, you know, what, what are the things from the past weeks that you can reuse, you know, which projects, just even names, like do you think could be related to this that you could be using? Okay, probably the, uh, the challenge about the telecom data, would be useful as well as the, some parts of the one where we did feature importance this might be useful and as well as last week's challenge about causal analysis might come in handy at least from Great. what I gather. Awesome, yeah. And yeah, th thanks. Thanks. I think that's a really good understanding um, and know what they're evaluating at. It's going to be a very similar evaluation as we do here. And that's one of the reasons why I chose it as well. Um, and therefore, whatever we are asking you to do, if you do it there, including DBC, including, you know, some of those good practices, it might, it might help um, in kind of convincing people that this is something that's nice. So, but yeah, overall, that's great. Yeah, okay, Zarala. Okay, thank you. Uh, my understanding is almost the same as uh, say, what Sam has said. Uh, I think the additional thing is that uh, besides the data that's given, we are also free to use any publicly available data sets so that we can get more insights from them. So overall, it's just analyzing how COVID has affected the digital learning uh, space. So we can uh, normally <clears throat> try to analyze the effect of different variables like uh, policies, uh, practices made by the government, uh, demographics of the districts, uh, broadband access, and the other things. We can also relate to other public data sets about maybe, maybe about different uh, demographic uh, data set or another, anything that has to do with digital learning that we might think that might affect it. And uh, the other thing is that, that we are struggling right now is we are trying to create a team, but I think we, we haven't found a way to do that. And maybe if you can guide us. Um, I, I don't think I can help there, but definitely like Mahalate or Abu Bakr, um, try it. I think you probably did Abu Bakr and also Kevin is there. Last year, you guys have done the same thing, so probably you could help. So yeah, maybe reach out to Zalalem and his team if if you know Abu Bakr. I'm sorry, I think there's a question. 
it's like they are struggling to create a team in Kado for this for this competition. One thing you should know that at least everybody should have at least an account, a Kado account. And maybe if you haven't done that, maybe that's something you look at. But yeah, maybe uh, if anyone has done already a group, just also you can reach out to that. Okay. Great. So I want great strategies. What's your strategy? It seems like. The project is clear. You have read it. Some of you, and some of you who hasn't, please, you know, raise any. Earlier, for example, very good by Rachel. There was a question. You know, should we use that? Those are tiny things that you need to figure it out now, today, and you should have strategy today, so that you can get somewhere right. So, it's like I want those kind of questions to be details, not just overalls as well, to be raised. So. Um, yeah, this is feel free to do that. Bergu? Yeah, I just uh, joined and uh, I think yeah, you were okay. saying that I wasn't unable to create a team. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just created uh, in my account and you can create a team for one person and then you can do the team that me. Okay, so you create a team as one person and then you can add others. Is that he can case? add. He can add. He also can consider himself as a team and work. Why is that? Mean? He will be asked for a team name in his account. But is that so when, when you create when you yeah, create your right account? Right. Okay. So maybe just somewhere in the property of your profile. That let me could check. Okay. Yeah, well, right. uh, but I have go a question. Guys. Go on. Go on uh, have you added uh, someone? I've already created a team with mine. I think everyone, when they join the competition, you'll join as a team of one. I think that's how it says on the documentation. But have you been able to create at least one team member? Have you able to be to add team member? Yeah, uh, yeah. The project is to be done individually, so I don't think of adding anyone in my team because yes, our our assignment is to be done individually, right? So, no, I mean, it's you can arrange your team. But my question is uh, I need to validate my form for further like analysis, and I can't do that. That's I have one issue. So, you so is that does that mean you couldn't verify your form? Yes. Uh, but why the system doesn't accept my phone as a valid phone? It's valid. I've tried different formats with plus two five one, with zero nine, with nine. It's still valid. Okay, that's another bug that if anyone um, have an issue, please just consider discussing. But it should just be straightforward. And maybe you can try another phone, someone else's phone uh, from your family or something, and then. Check it if it's just particularly because of the phone number. Okay. Anyone else who who have a different or something that they want to add? In particular, talk strategies. You know, why why do you think we give you this project? And are you excited? If you're not excited, you know, or if you're excited, where do you think is gonna be where you will have leverage? I think most of the time when you think of this kind of thing, imagine everybody who is kind of competing, basically the majority, let's say the 500 out of the 2,000 or something, are clever. Probably more clever than you because they have had time. And you started now. So it's important that you think slightly that mindset. OK, you it. OK, thank you. So my question is, when I see the data, uh, it's, it's really large, large data. It's almost half gigabyte, and there are lots of, uh, I think, engagement data. So are we going to merge those, or I don't know how to start that. That's okay. my question. Great. So anyone, now we have a question. Anyone also can try to answer that. But let's go to some menus. Minch. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Mm, I have a question on the accuracy part. It says did the author process the data? Uh, example merging and it says additional data source accurately. And I saw one of the computer uh, added four data sets from different source. So does it mean that we, we have to add also another data? So That's I don't like, need that is exactly what sometimes you know in this world when you have like with, with really clever people they know and also probably like in that area in the us they know that there are so many data sets in there they know that it will improve you know whatever training method you use will improve for example demographic data it could be about the places you know using the um, geotags or some other you could add absolutely i think it's you don't have to but of course to improve your model you know you become creative so there are absolutely those elements in that it says clarity accuracy and creativity so the creativity aspect is the um, like what we were saying like for example if same mentioned that if you use some of like if you try to reduce it in such a way that you could use uh, causal effects that's something i would say a very novel methods um, and then if you are also using some kind of visualizations that that does that reveals some insight that's another thing um, and then exactly that in that creativity is exactly did the author utilize additional public data sources in their analysis if you do they know only that data is just you know every data is limited so it always will improve if you kind of bring and join more data and that's where sometimes if you are working in a group that's where you you would really benefit because other people can look for a data can try to find and discuss and merge other type of data what is relevant like and and always that really means what we want to answer the the part that is given and answering any analysis will answer that question some way but the most important part is answering questions related to it like for example are you accurate is this does it make sense uh, is your model can i trust it all of these things you will not answer only with one type of data sometimes you know like or the data is weak to answer and by going and kind of like showing finding evidence other evidence or other things that you can use to train or stuff will help it so that's why they of course yeah so this is this is not an exercise this is real policy you are probably if you win you're going to probably change policy in the us imagine if you are in the top 10 for this you will probably surely will just be straight to any job whether it's google or something because i mean like all these use you know winners are it's kind of your life is changed right so this isn't only just a matter of like something it's a company that is paying and on top of that let's consider how much you're gonna earn you're gonna earn twenty thousand dollars um if you win or if you are at the top i don't know how many uh, i think the top four and then you will divide it in five five thousand right or with it with the other team so if you are a team and if there are four teams you, the four teams will divide it i think um five thousand so on top so this is this is much more of like real 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 work like in a sense we, we always say real and we are doing real but the thing is you sometimes don't know or don't use don't see the exact the immediate uh, outcome here you can see the immediate outcome and that's the most important part and we are not the ones to grade it as well we will grade it but uh, actually the company will grade it so the people even getting that grade is already so useful for you because that tells you how you how you are seen by a completely different company that just doesn't know you, who you are, where you come from, and all that. And that is that is you know the essential elements of it. So just just to give you a context, yes. So yeah, think and be creative and try to see if you could use other public data sets that may be available. Does that answer some Yes, And can I add one? Yeah, go on. Right. So how can you collaborate? So I want to work in group. Yeah. So, so is there exactly. Any platform like GitHub. Maybe? I think you can work on GitHub. Yeah. It's like it's still it's still possible. Everything you can work on 
on cargo notebooks you can work in 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 your computer you can work in github it's exactly the same as as usual you just have to read what it says what you don't need to do what you should do and what you shouldn't do so for example inside trade inside whatever thing blah 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 like you know there are some some of the rules but you should use all the tools that are available to you and um, like that you have been using so far okay. yeah so okay um ul's question is i think i i forgot like in the as we answer these questions you will can you repeat and then jacinda are you going to answer if so then you can remind us also you uh, okay uh, so my question was uh when i check out the uh, data description and i found that the engagement data are uh, i think too much so i don't know how to tackle this uh, there are other data set like the product info and district district info and the engagement data is almost like uh, half gigabyte and the uh, or I, I didn't i don't know the difference between them i think they are the data and so i'm thinking like do we have to merge them or do we have only to work with one of the data like there are so many csv files yeah, that was I think that, that's that's exactly the, the exciting part. I thought you would just be excited by looking at that and it's like, what is it? How can I use it? That's exactly the the actual question. How can you get some value from those many data points? Yeah, well, I was thinking of uh, merging them because uh, according to what I saw, they say that uh, the it's like the engagement. Engagement data set has like uh, has foreign keys of both uh, uh, the product's unique identifier and I think uh, something else. So they uh, they point both to the the district data and the product data. So if there is a way we can merge these data sets into one, then I think it will it will be easy for exploration exactly. and analysis. So you should always think in one way. That's probably you will, that was also your question, right? yes yeah so always when if i approach these kind of things what do i do i always just there's a very basic formula that for every data analysis the business question and then i am going to infer <clears throat> what do i need and some things are joinable like you can think of it as a database just some some tables are independent like in a sense that they were collected independently and so there if they are the case so if there is a feature that is unique in both let's say ip address it could be in this case you might not have it but it could be the some kind of time you know the timestamp so timestamp will tell you and location right so location and timestamp for example this could be the index that you could use basically you can hash that and you can try to find or in hashing like for example you could try to to get like of course timestamp will not be the same because it's very probably in nanosecond but if you just within one minute or within a, a few minutes you kind of hash it then you might be able to join and especially if you have like multiple indexes that could identify a form of location then i can use that if there is already an existing some kind of id great i will use that one to join if not i'm gonna be creative to try to reduce my error because when i join for anything that is not that doesn't have an id a unique id that means there is error so whenever there is error there is only one strategy reduce the error so you can use now machine learning to match the pattern or you can use also uh, some kind of hashing the normal way like some mean statistical way to match so it is that where is the creativity comes in it's like you must think like okay i you become a data engineer exactly in that in that aspect i know that the rain is may not um, so if you don't hear me just let me know uh, because it's raining and it's quite loud and um, so i think yeah it's like if you don't join the data there's no way you will yes okay so if you don't merge them or if you don't really join 
There is no way, however you do analysis, you might not benefit from that analysis. But then there are other aspects. So where do you merge it? Do you merge it at the data level? Do you merge it at the insight level? So it's called, in that case, latent space. So if you create a model, and if you can estimate the model parameters differently for different data, that's also called merging. But in this case, you are merging it at, let's say, um, at the latent space. So for example, if you have two books, they are different, there's no way that you match, then you would, you, what you would do is probably you would do word to vec, which then transforms it into a certain, let's say, coordinate space, and then in that coordinate space, the data will be merged. So there are many strategies of merging. It's called, the, the general sense is called data fusion. One place also data fusion happens is also actually causality. Last, last time, the last week project, was actually used also for data fusion. So in a way that you could use that strategy, but that's exactly the heart of the problem. That is exactly where they're asking you everything about this is all about that, which is find another data that might help you. Engagement is one they gave you, but there may be other demographic, you know, some activity. It could be lights, you know, satellite data. And I'm, I'm not asking you or suggesting you to do it, but that's how you improve. Because satellite data, let's imagine if it were like different places, the light, the night light that you will find from the brightness of the night light at, um, from a satellite data might tell you about economic activity in that area, for example. But that's, a, again, you know, it's a different level. I'm not asking you to do this or, you know, complicated. The most important is to simplify, proceed, but know that it is endless. The possibilities of merging and improving is endless, but it's also complex and you probably need years to, to do some of these things. So it's about finding that balance and strategizing and do what you do first. And the reason why, like someone just asked, I think, in the chat, why we say, it, you know, you have to submit one by Tuesday. Because you must, like, in this case, you must find something and submit um on tuesday like just one so that you get the feeling that that it's actually that you are you're kind of part of that competition and then by saturday you are just like a git activity but now in this case you kind of really every day it's called delivery so that means every day you work you structure it in the way that you, you think you added some value it could be just one function one visualization whatever you added you deliver it Deliver means, in this case, in Kaggle, you submit it for evaluation. And people, if you have seen in many other delivery boards, they submit like thousands, hundreds, because that's exactly delivery that, you know, you're kind of delivering in sync. And definitely the, the people, the ones who are evaluating, are going to be not checking every day, but they have probably an automatic process which says, if it is significant, you know, maybe check it. And that's why you might not see at the end the leaderboard, but you will see the private leaderboard or the submission that you can take screenshots. Okay? Yeah, it's kind of data fusion is basically different, but it's not like features. It's like it could be features means like one feature and another feature are related in horizontally. That means there is a key that joins them. In this case, you might not have that. You might, there might not be two data points, could be, one could be a book, a text, another could be a video. So you, there is no, like, ID, for example, to, to fuse them. So it is, it is exactly, it's an ad, ad operator, an ad, it, it could be ad, if it's just a pure joinable, it's exactly what you said. If it's two database tables, which share the same unique key, then that's, that's a kind of like, exactly like uh, adding the, the usual add feature operator. But if it is completely different, then the addition can hap will happen only in different space. It could be in a concept space. Basically, it's the general term called the latent space. So whatever model that you have. Is that clear? And is there more question, um, more explanation, more strategy I, I expect from you? Just, you know, this is, you're now, out in the wild.
Same goal and then Christian. Okay, uh, my question is, how does it work with our normal workflow? Do we only upload the notebooks or is it, can we bundle all of our code together? Because how we normally would work is like, we have scripts, importing them and using them in our notebooks to add some sort of structure to the code. If we're not doing that and we're only working on the notebooks, yeah, uh, I, think, I think you can do the same by, I think you can import some folders into your space and you can import them. And as long as, you know, if, as long as it's public, uh, I think the, the people would see. So definitely it's not, you're not expected to work on only on one notebook and submit one notebook. There's a folder, you can submit a folder but probably the main notebook being visible for them to start. So I think there should be a mechanism that you can write scripts and stuff like that, and you can import it into your notebook uh, and see. I think that's what they want to see is actually, of course, your visualization, your final outcome, so that they can check here and there. But yeah, it should be possible. To, to do the very similar thing. Okay, uh, Christian? Yes, yes, uh, you my sorry, I, 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 was, I was very late, so I missed some part of the discussion, but I would like to, to know if uh, in this week we have to submit either in Kegon and also or 10 Academy, or just, we will just use Kaggle. I think it's Kaggle, and then uh, Kaggle, the submission, because it's, it should be public, your your thing, then you should submit it to us. If it's not public, then if it's it has to be private, then you only need to submit until you finally say like, okay, you know, I'm not competing, I'm done with the competition, then you only, you keep the code. So it, sometimes they require uh, a public link. Sometimes they require a private link. That means that the code should be yours and only submit the, um, I don't know, some some results just that would be evaluated. In this case, it's the code and it has to be public. So, so that means as long as you just, for us, submit the link, it's fine. But I think we also, I have to also check exactly like we should, like from our side, we should do the testing and see like reading exactly what is required. We will do that today and we will update the folder. But it's like in this case now, if you, are, if you want to continue uh, competing and if it's a private data or if it's a, a private code, don't share it with us because that will disqualify you. So that's why I'm saying you must always read like in this case, you are not with us. You are with fully authorized to act like independent to work on Kaggle. And oh. us is just basically, you give us on the evidence. So every rule, you don't obey our rule, but you you obey their rule, the rule of the Kaggle competition uh, in Kaggle. So that should be very clear. Uh, but, but you, how, how you can you be, uh, how, I think the academy can access for our notebook. Because use... it's visible. Your notebook usually is either visible, or if it's not visible, your rank is visible to you. And you that's what we ask you. You screenshot your rank, and okay. we know where, which rank you are. Okay. So it's exactly that we use, like the screenshots that you submitted a number of files, so that means the minimum one by uh, Tuesday, so that's for the, you know, entry, and then five, total of five by uh, Saturday, um, and that will tell us, uh, maybe not, that's what uh, Bagu, uh, or you yeah, sorry, they might not, in this case, most of the time, yes, so in more, in almost every other, com like other Kaggle competitions, it's automatic, but in this case, it's because humans manually probably grade it, you might not receive that. But for us, it's sufficient that you submitted that number at least. 
and then we will wait until it gets drunk. Okay. do. Yeah, like two questions. One is, uh, I think we can uh, update the Kiki notebook there. So why five notebooks? Why not? We have one. It's not, uh, it's not five notebooks. It's five submissions. Every time you submit, the counter increases by one. Matter. So okay. the, the, two, the two things are different. The, the, the challenge description, I was reading it, and the way I understand it, it's more exploratory than uh, showing our critics or like solving any kind of issue. I don't see that nowhere. So what exactly are we going to be creative about? I, mean, I think that's a, a, very, a very good question, but it's also underestimation or something you're missing. Every place in data science, including data engineering is modeling. Just including copying the data, when the data is big, you probably will need to model it um, using some machine learning. So in a way that there is no such thing called data exploration simple. Missing value is, is a statistical concept. It is not just you know that you would feel it. And if you are creative, then you don't feel it with a mean and mode, but you try to simulate the data, create a very sophisticated model, and you feel the data. That's one part of creativity. So there is no such thing called data exploration, simple data exploration. That's just only, you know, to make life easy. But really, actually, ultimately, everything is all about ensuring that the data generation is, you understand the data generation, and you get actionable insight. In this case, you're actually asked more than modeling, more than anything we, we did, to change policy. That means to provide evidence. That requires basically extraordinary things, require extraordinary effort. So I'm not sure if that is if that is clear or if you have still questions. So this is a good question, and maybe many people have in their mind. So if it's not clear, let's just let's spend a bit more time on that. Is that clear? Yes. No, good for you. Not, not quite clear. I mean, you may be so. So okay. We have so, this data. It's huge, and as you said, it's around half gigabyte, and you can like infer or get a lot of things out of the data. But uh, you know, for instance, on the other no, 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 just, let me stop you there. exactly there because you said one word that's basically the entire humanity, or the entire machine learning, AI, and statistics combined. You just said infer something. How do you infer? For instance, uh, how many uh, you know products are there in a specific uh, description or a group and of what does it, what does it tell you that <laughs> it it will show me some kind of numbers like after two the data of course. Yeah, but the, let's say yeah, it shows you some kind of numbers. I, I'm sorry that I'm cutting you because it's it's just is the critical elements I wanted to get faster. So yes, it gets you some kind of number. How do you know that number is good number? Uh, well, I, I will have different numbers for districts, for different districts, and I'll have a rank, and you know, the upper is. Again, very good point. How do you rank them? There might be different matrices, but you know, for instance, the digital learning in uh, district demographics is just a number. So the higher the number, it is uh, one district is 50, the other one is 10. So do you think like 50 is bigger than 10? The number itself might have some kind of uh, meaning, like it doesn't have a unit, so it might not say anything. No, no, like the it has a unit, a unit of like engagement. Yeah. So 50 engagement, do you think it's more than 10 engagement? Uh, we can't say anything based on only that data, like the other things, the other features in the, in the data models as well. For instance, if only a few number of uh, people participated in the, in the team, and right. very thousand of students participated in the 50, right. in that case, uh, no one will be Okay, like, I, I'm cutting you again, sorry, just because I think that's sufficient for what I want to get. So don't feel 
that I am I'm kind of cutting you. It's just because, yeah, it's sufficient with that understanding. So I'm just moving to the next step. That's great. Therefore, what do you need to do? That means there are basically confounding, right? Now you're talking about confounding other variables. And on top of that, there is also error, uncertainty in that number, sample size, right? And also yeah. many other details that you need to check, right? Yes. And how do you know what kind of error does it have that number? The error in the data? Mm. No, no, in this case, like let's say 50 engagement and another one. And now, like you want to compare because if you don't know the error, the uncertainty and the sampling and all that, you know, it just only, you may say 50 is greater than 10, but you may be just telling nothing, like no action. It means action even inside means that's an insight, but it's, you, you didn't yeah, provide that, evidence. That's, yeah. that's, so, that's the question. Exactly. Uh, that's the having the numbers. What was mm -hmm. the exact question? Are we supposed to, you know, say this method is better, we should have or follow this kind of measurements? Or they, they don't want your number crunching. They want insight. That's exactly what it means, insight. Insight means something that they can use it to shape policy in such a way that but that to shape policy means you must conclusively show that is what you're saying 50 greater than 10 is is you know it's because of exactly covid or because of some other uh, cause and therefore if you act by increasing let's say the broadband size in that area that the people will improve that's what policy is expecting Yes. So that they, they, they don't want your number or your thing, they want your full understanding or insight and which that insight needs to have evidence. Evidence means you need to do all types of computations and all that to actually ensure 50 is greater than 10. And for a certain cause, that means the causality one way either through a machine learning or through a causal analysis should be or through some creative analysis or whatever needs to be kind of checked and monitored and it has to be predictive enough that if that is the case then if we do like if somebody else does some other experiment they should be able to get what you said because you know that's an insight an insight means something that is not about the relationship in the data but it's about what is a reality Does that make it clear? Yes, 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 it does. Right. Okay, because that's exactly a very important question you asked. And I, I took the time because it is so important for everyone to get that understanding. So that's thank you for asking that one. Uh, okay, I will come to uh, Stacey, but is there a question? I don't think we are supposed to recreate missing data. The intention seems to be more to remove identification of the process from the data. I hope same by now, it's still, it, the entire thing is about insight more than a certain type of operation, whether it's missing or not. So you are asked, you know, Google can, all of, many of the automation can do many things you cannot even imagine now. That means they can do visualization, auto-visualize, run some deep learning to find features that are important and all that. So they will, they will not ask you or, or give you 20,000 for doing that. They will give you 20,000 only if you bring new insights, insights that are important or actionable. So I hope that answers yours, uh, same. So basically the end product is telling whether those factors exactly, it's sort of related to, you know, yeah, like answering the exact, the bold, in bold, in also in Kaggle and also in our challenge documentation, that's the, the bold part, that's for the business context, that is exactly that you need to answer. It's all that is based on that they are going to be evaluated. So then I will come to Stacey and then Christine. Okay. I have a question on the data sets uh, yeah. about uh, bringing many data sets together. So when we do that, we also increase the variables. And then yes. again, we have to reduce the number of variables. So I was wondering how that works. Exactly, that's a very good one. And that's exactly called 
you know, in word to vec, like in just a, a, a simple case, you have a book. But if you merge it, if you have a model, let's say a model in the word to vec means, let's say you use a dictionary, an English dictionary. Let's imagine you use only the very common ones and very whatever used. Let's imagine you have a 2000 word vocabulary. Now, what it does tell you is that you reduce every book in the world to a 200 vector or 2000 vector. That basically, if you didn't do that, the probably the complexity of modeling each book, whatever, and putting them together would have been very large. But by just having a one model that's called latent space, in this case, the 200, 2000 vector is basically your latent space or your latent variables. So most of the time when you do data fusion, you reduce the data in different ways. One is by compressing them uh, using a, some kind of uh, uh, mirroring, like you know, you you kind of use apply, let's say, uh, TSNE, or it could be just like another network which just takes like a big number and kind of shrinks in the middle and then reproduce it, um, or PCA if it was linear and stuff. Exactly, you will do some creativity, appropriate things to reduce the data, but it doesn't mean even if you have like in one data set thousand, in another data set ten thousand columns. You know, you don't, that doesn't mean that you merge them like horizontally. You can do, you can extract some, you know, two data, two vectors from there, three vectors from here, and you will have ultimately five. So that is called you're processing them and you're recreating feature engineering such that, you know, that feature engineering is through data, you know, dimension reduction independently, and then finding some other way to, to match or statistical match. That is exactly what is called creativity. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so latent spaces, most of the time data fusions happen one way or another. Okay, and did we have someone, Christian? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I would like to ask you, is, is it possible to, 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 how is it possible to merge two data sets which, which doesn't have some link? It's like, I, when I take the first data set, I didn't see some features which, which will be repeated on the second data set. So then the, the, the merge will be very easy. Yeah, if it was, if it were, there is a key, it would have been easy, simple. You join, it's just a, a, an SQL or kind of database join, you know, it's just, but when they don't have, then you really come into the world of amazing kind of exploration and innov innovation and creativity. And one place is, it's called statistical match. So that means you try to create some kind of relationships. You model, like you take a certain features from one data that let's say geographic data, timestamp and stuff, and you try to create a model that would map that into some a user, let's say a fake user ID. And then you try to do the same model you apply into the other data sets in such a way that they are statistically matched. What does it mean statistically matched? You're basically, you know, I work in um, advertisement. In advertisement, we always do match data, but we don't match at all because of GDPR and other, we don't collect who that user is. That means we don't have ID on every person, but we reduce features to say a person who's using the, the same OS, same browser, and um, and then the same and who's seeing the same website, we call it the same person. Let's call it. Let's give it that, that ID one. And now every person within that with that ID, which we act as if like that's the same user because statistically for us that is the space we want to consider. So that's what we call we match like. A person who scrolls similarly could be the same. Like you can match it based on their scrolling behavior or based on their engagement element. That's called a statistical match. You are creating, reducing into, you are creating agents based on why do you want an ID? Let's say, why do you want a name? Like some names for Christine or Devora or, you know, Jakinda. That's just one form of matching. Like that means every time I see Jakinda, then I will match it with Jakinda. But it's a name match, right? But I could have matched, for me, 
Ayrul Layrul Jakinda means somebody who is kind of, you know, a tall of one something, one point something meter, and a weight of something, and who is from, I don't know, Nigeria. Like, I will consider everybody that falls in that category Jakinda. Then I will match all their property, I will consider it as one, like made out of one person. That's called a statistical match. That means you create a category to match. Is that clear? Yes, yes, it's clear. I think it right. makes sense. It's very clear. Thank you. Yeah, so that's why don't don't consider ID or something as just the only thing. That's just ID is basically means for all from the machine perspective, somebody logged in. But it could have been, let's say in Google you have a Gmail, right? But if that same Gmail, if you use if you allow your brother to use it. It's no more, you know, it, it, Saba doesn't mean just only Saba. Saba means her, her sister, her brother, if all of them, they use one email. But for all practical purposes, we will act Saba to be one ID, right? So even in reality, this concept of one key, you know, it's oversold, like in a sense that it only just is another identifier, nothing more. And you can create many identifiers out of many things that stickle, you know, through some kind of learning pattern or something you can just, it's called, I think, user segmentation, normally. The general topic in that area is called user segmentation or segmentation. Okay. Okay. And uh, I have also one another question. Yeah. When they talk about exploration, I think, did exploration mean also to model, to modeling the data? Because when they talk about exploration, I think it's just to see how data look like. Is it possible they have some kind of relationship about it? Yeah, uh, Ex exploration, exploration is, you know, ultimately names like exploration, modeling and all that is to help you decompose a process. Yeah. It's a continuous process and you want, it helps you to decompose. And exploration means because you have no idea about the data, then by exploring the data through graphical and then graphical things that are not abstract. That, that means like three things that are that you know humans don't digest like computers. API versus website, you know. Website, we see it, we we just interact with it. We understand it's for humans. APIs are for computers. So. You know, it's like API is in this case a model, you can call it, because you don't see what is happening inside there, inside the communication. While a browser, even if the browser is like that, they communicate through an API, but what is input output, you are you are seeing it. That's kind of exploration, because it's manually done for you to get the feeling in the brain that humans have. But if you are doing in the brains that computers have, that's called modeling or statistical analysis. So it is it is basically what they what they mean is that do some exploration in such a way that you allow us to understand as a human. But still you have to do, you know, you have to still do the same thing. Get insights. Visualize it and do things such that the insight is clear. The evidence is clear. In this case not by the kind of numbers like which which says accuracy is this much or you know the figure of merit is that or you know and the area under curve is that not in that way but in a way that that shows relationships and patterns and things like that so that's only distinguishing but ultimately both of them they want insight and that insight could be about the past about the present or about the future when it's about insight about the future it becomes predictive if it comes about the past, it usually becomes um, normally like this visualization um, or what you call exploratory data analysis or analytics. It's called the generic name. It's called analytics. Analytics doesn't try to, it wants to understand the past. And then when it's, and then the combination is what you do in both. But from analytics, you can also translate it into, into the future, which is predictive, you know, through some either by just hypothesis testing or hi drawing hypothesis from that that basically becomes, you know, a future. So in a way, they're all connected. It's only, don't don't think they are so completely separated. It's just API and website. Okay, so means. Okay, I have a question, maybe. Yeah. 
so I was thinking to so is that the way in my understanding that we need to identify the factors uh, maybe uh, that affects the learning Absolutely. platforms yep. I think. and I was thinking to use multi variate regression so is that the best model there is no I best. How to there is no the such thing, plan. but it's a good start. Okay. It's a good start. It's a good start to do to use. So try to answer exactly what they ask. What is the state of digital learning in 2020? What do you think it for that question? What kind of analysis is suitable? In a sense, like more of a generic. Is it predictive? Is it analytics? <laughs> Can you more elaborate about this analytics? So in, in the, the first, the first in that you know there are a few questions that are listed as the primary key business values for this competition. And the first question is, what is the state of digital learning in 2020? Now, earlier I said sometimes you explore the data to to get to learn about what is present through a past data. And sometimes your interest or the methods that you choose depends because you want to learn the future. You want to optimize about the future. In that case, it's called predictive analysis. That's why so many machine learning modeling is invented because you are optimizing for learning or performance. The criteria or the, you know, the metric you are choosing is not to reward, reproduce the data, but more unseen data, the future, basically, in time sense. So, but the question dictates what you would do to answer that. So the question, which is the first one, what is the state of digital learning in 2020? Do you need more of predictive analysis or analytics? Is that clear, Samish? Yes, sir. thank you. So what do you think? No, no, like it's a question I asked you. So you say what's the state of digital learning? Yeah, so, so the first question they ask you to, you know, to address in the challenge, in the competition is what is the state of digital learning in 2020? And what kind of analytics or what kind of analysis would you use to answer that kind of question? I think it's more like analysis. Exactly. So it's analytics. Just basically exploring and getting the pattern. You're trying to basically get the pattern to, for today, like, you know, from the past data, what is the pattern? So you're optimizing more about like, what it looks like today because it's a state of digital learning today. So you explore all those data that, that will tell you information about, you know, how do people engage? Are they kind of frequently logging in? Are they kind of continuously the time analysis? Do they just you know, how much they spend in average, you're trying to get that thing with a few digestible parameters or insights that will show the state of digital learning today. It has let, you know, you can specify it by like one parameter saying like, oh, the state of digital learning is people really highly engaged. That doesn't great, but you can even go further. What does it mean highly engaged? Or people, are highly engaged of this amount, let's say in average people, then it's quantifying. But you're still saying about the behavior of the past and showing with enough detail the state of digital learning in COVID era, right? So that's analytics. And then they ask you, and how does the engagement of digital learning relate to factors such as district democratic, broadband access, state national uh, level policies and events? There, it's many things. Again, it's analyzed. But then you basically try to understand you, you, like, let's say, I would say, let's say I got an insight which says, as uh, such a district, district XYZ, uh, because it, has, it, it doesn't have um, broadband, whatever, it's not learning because they take more time. But then I can use another district to test my hypothesis. In that case, it's predictive, right? So it was the insight I got, but then to test my own thing, I am doing, I'm applying it into another. If it's generic, if it's really the truth, 
then another district with a similar property should be um, should have you know should should also not have a good thing. So in that case, this becomes a bit predictive while testing. So that's why you split you know some in a creative way your data such that you create your own test and um, training in that way. Whatever you extract, you verify it. And if that is the case, it's trustworthy. That means it's evidence. And therefore, that's how you complement and answer the question. Everyone's question? strategy and you know the appreciation of the challenge and how how many things it might involve because from last week one thing we shouldn't miss is that as a business as a client as a data scientist you are interested in the analysis and everything else that's going there as a business client i'm less interested about your work and I'm more interested about reality and i want the statement you give me to be more about reality than about the data I think that yeah, yeah, network is uh, is answered. Uh, what the question? Yeah. What the question was answering? I think yeah, he has an issue with his network. So let's just wait. Or yeah, Yachis, Yachis not online. She's supposed to. The each chat session is going to start after this tutorial so Abu Bakr, can you continue to speak or I was wondering the I don't know the question was on we can't yeah, hear you we can hear you now yeah <laughs> okay, so um, yeah. thank you very much, guys, for making that time here. Would um, continue answering the questions? Or, uh, 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 yeah, she has joined. I think she is. Abu Bakr. Uh, you can go on with uh, the chit chat session. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Yachi. Okay, hi. 